Here we're going to introduce the concept of chemical potential, which is an important concept I'll be using throughout the rest of thermodynamics. Chemical potential. Now remember, so far we said, it's around here somewhere, there it is. So far, for example, we said G, uh, the Gibbs free energy, was a function of pressure and temperature. Now we're, we, and we also said in the previous lecture that in fact dG is less than or equal to dW prime, where this now was a non-PV work. See, if we just have G as a function of P and temperature, the only work that can be done is PV work. So now what we're going to introduce is a third variable that G is a function of, and that is um, number of molecules or number of moles N. Free energy now will be explicit. G is a function not only of temperature and pressure, but also number of moles. Let's go ahead and do that. G because we're chemists and we're interested in number of moles and energy changes when we change number of moles of products and reactants, we now say that G is a function of not only pressure and temperature, but number of moles. And in general, this could be N sub I, where I is the ith compound in a reaction. We could have N1, N2, N3 if we have A plus B goes to C. Well, this, let's uh, see what we can do with this. GG now is how G, let's do temperature first, temperature at constant. Now we have to have a constant pressure and number of moles because we have three variables times DT plus how G changes with pressure. Again, at constant temperature and number of moles, two variables here times DP plus, and that third, that new third variable, how G changes with number of moles at constant temperature and pressure times change in number of moles. We are going to give this a special symbol and that special symbol will be defined as mu. So mu, Greek letter, lowercase mu, stands for chemical or stands for the how G changes with N at constant temperature and pressure and this will call the chemical potential. And we've already done the same for here. For instance, this we associate with, with temperature goes entropy minus S, and this we associate with volume. So let's put all these new symbols in plus these old symbols, and we'll end up with this equation. We'll just put a dG is minus SDT plus VDP now I'm going to rewrite this as the sum over I equal 1 to the number of compounds, the chemical potential of that compound times DNI. So there it is. This is called the master equation of chemical thermodynamics, or sometimes called fundamental. And it's chemical thermodynamics because now we're having, having number of moles in a chemical reaction. All right, so I just want to introduce that topic there, defining chemical potential as mu. And if you have like three or four different kinds of molecules in your system, each one will have a different chemical potential. Chemical potential depends upon the number of moles. And for example, if you have a reactant going to products, then the chemical potential of those reactants will decrease as the reaction proceeds from reactions to products because you just have fewer number of them and the potential, the chemical potential, the products will increase as the reaction goes forward since you're getting more of those. Chemical potential, think of it that way, the potential of chemicals to do chemical work, to participate in a chemical reaction. Okay, well we'll use this equation later on in thermodynamics. Let's define partial molar quantities. Partial molar quantities is how some state variable or some state function changes with amount. For example, if you take the partial derivative of G in Gibbs free energy with respect to amount or number of particles or moles or whatever, that is a partial molar quantity. So that's mu. For example, partial molar volume will be how the volume changes with number of moles at constant temperature and, and all those other things. Partial molar quantities. Now with that, 
oh well one more point is this so at constant temperature and pressure constant temperature that goes away constant pressure that goes away the internal or sorry the Gibbs free energy change is just the sum over all the components in the system of the their chemical potential times the change in the number of moles of that particular substance and equilibrium will be when dg is zero or when these chemical potentials you sum all these chemical potentials up they'll be equal to 